Welcome to the Resurrection Baptist Church Love Study Group. Amen. Today is March 27th, 2020. Happy birthday to Albany Brianna Childs. Mm. You're getting older. Yes, she is. And I want to give a prayer out to the Phillips family in Decatur, Illinois. Cousin Larry Law was called on home by the Lord. We're praying that in this time of bereavement, you will lift up your eyes into the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. The Lord blessed him. And now it's time for him to enjoy his reward. I wanted to start off today, and I have thought about this all week long. Last year, God blessed the Resurrection Baptist Church to go to Kentucky to see the replica of Noah's Ark. And it was a wonderful time. And while I was there, I said, Lord, you know I can't see, but I know you know you can fill in Tell me what I need to know and teach me even more of what you've already taught me. It was a great time. I think it might have been 100 degrees outside, but I certainly enjoyed myself. And I enjoyed the church being with us. I wanted to go back to Noah's time because a lot of times and especially today with the virus with us being shut in how God blesses us anyway all week long and for the last few days and even maybe two weeks now over the news, they have talked about the death of so many people in different places and how it's important for us to stay shut in, to wash our hands and all the other instructions. And whether we know it or not, God is always a God who gives his people signs. It's whether or not your perspective is right. Even today I heard someone on the news say, how long do we have to live like this? And that lets me know that sometimes our perspective about life and the things that are going on around us and even within us are not quite right. One thing I can say is you haven't heard a lot of murders being told to us over the local news. People are afraid and following the instructions of the scientists to stay in, which is a good instruction. But I think back in Noah's time, because in the Bible, God had saw that his creation had become so wicked mm -hmm. and that they had forsaken and forgotten him. And in forsaking and forgetting God, there's always a consequence. Wickedness was all over the earth. Violence, killing, disobedience, and irreverence for the Almighty was everywhere. Matter of fact, the Bible said that it was continually in the heart of man this wickedness. And so God shows up 
but yet he finds grace and shows us grace in the life of Noah. Noah is a believer and God shows us his love, his mercy, and his kindness. When you think about what we are and doing at this present time, it is a uh, short compared to what Noah had to do and what Noah endured. And yet Noah came out just wonderful. I often tell people that Noah built an ark. Him and his family took him over a hundred years to build that ark. Had one window or one door and we're going to say a little bit about that. We all know about the animals coming to the ark and Noah had the responsibility of taking care of them once they entered the ark. It's a wonderful story, not only of God's judgment by the flood, but also of God's love, His grace, and His mercy. Noah was not a perfect man, as when you read the story, you'll find out that after the flood, and God told him that he could go out, he got drunk. Hmm. A lot of people laugh at that, but they, you got to understand what he had to endure. He just wasn't in the ark for a week or two. He didn't have to follow the mandate of the president or any scientist. But he being warned of God that it was going to rain, did what God told him to do in building that ark. Today we're going to read Genesis chapter 7 as much as we can because there's some great lessons in it for us. And as we read this Genesis chapter 7, you're going to see three great lessons. Now, I know last week I told you I was going to talk about the cross. And in reality, I am going to say something about the cross of Jesus Christ. Because there's no greater security than to be secured in the arms of the living God. And all Christian believers know that. There's no greater encouragement in these trying times. It's not about money. It's not about joblessness. Noah had to do a lot more than we did. He had to endure a lot more. He worked a lot harder. And yet... The reward they receive by the hand of the Almighty is going to be greater than the stimulus package that the fellow on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue signed or will sign. I want to say to you that it's not necessary for us to put our trust in another human being. The Lord would love for us to trust him. Matter of fact, that's all he asks. Just trust me. My credentials are greater than anybody's that you ever put up beside me. I have proven myself over and over and over again. And someone might ask, well, where is God at right now? He's the same place he's always been on the throne. Right. He might not be on the throne of your heart, but if you would open up your heart and let him take his seat on the throne of your heart, you can be at peace in the midst of these trying times. Okay, because when we read Genesis chapter 7, I'm going to point out three lessons 
but there are so many more lessons just in that one chapter. Genesis chapter 7, begin there at verse verse. The Living Translation. Finally the day came when the Lord said to Noah, Go into the boat with all your family. For among all the people of the earth, I consider you alone to be righteous. Bring in the animals too, a pair of each, except those kinds I have chosen for eating and for sacrifice. Take seven pairs of each of them and seven pairs of every kind of bird. Thus there will be every kind of life reproducing again after the flood has ended. One week from today, I will begin 40 days and nights of rain and all the animals and birds and reptiles I have made will die. So Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. He was 600 years old when the flood came. 600 years old when the flood came. The key thing is that Noah obeyed God. Now we have a problem in today because we don't like to obey nobody. Because we like to call our own shots. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, they showed a kid out on the beach. He said, I don't care what nobody say, I'm going to party. He was saying, I have no authority over me. I'm going to party. Well, he had the back, back pedal on that. Somebody got to him and told him, you need to apologize and get your tail on the inside. Keep reading. Verse 7. He boarded the boat with his wife and sons and their wives to escape the flood. With him were all the various kinds of animals, those for eating and sacrifice and those that were not, and the birds and the reptiles. They came into the boat in pairs, male and female, just as God commanded Noah. One week later, when Noah was 600 years, two months, and 17 days old, the rain came down in mighty torrents from the sky and the subterranean waters burst forth upon the earth for forty days and nights. But Noah had gone into the boat that very day with his wife and sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephath, and their wives. With them in the boat were pairs of every kind of animal, domestic and wild, and reptiles and birds of every sort. Two by two they came, male and female, just as God had commanded. Then the Lord God closed the door and shut them in. Stop right there. Not only did Noah obey, but the Lord shut him in. Today all over this country and in other parts of the world, we are shut in by God. There's no water outside. It might be raining where you're at, but there is death outside. Mm. Outside the ark that Noah had built, based upon the commandment of God, everything was going to die. The only living thing was Noah, his wife, his kid, and their wives, and the animals. So life was on the inside. But the Lord shut him in. That was to signify to us that there's only security in God Almighty. The security is not in what the politicians do for you. The security is not in the money that you save. The security is not how you have prepared yourself. The security lies in the Almighty God through Jesus Christ. The only way you and I can ever be secure is to be secure in Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. There are people dying that we know and some we don't know. In all the states across this country, in hospitals where you think they'll make you well, people are still dying. Mm -hmm. Just because you go to the hospital does not mean that you are safe and secure. But if you are in Christ, no matter what happens in the hospital, you are safe and secure. Yes, Lord. 
because death obeys the voice of the Lord. Okay, keep reading. Verse 17. For 40 days the roaring floods prevailed, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the water rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely upon it, until finally the water covered all the high mountains under the whole heaven, standing 22 feet and more above the highest peaks, and all living things upon the earth perished. Now notice that everything that was upon the earth died. With this virus that is around and in our country, we can't touch each other, we can't shake hands, we can't hug each other, which we ought to always be doing and always love to do. But now we can't do that. And it's all based upon we don't want to catch or even pass this virus. But God shut us in. I believe that the sign that we're given today is a sign by God. He's given us signs in the past, and we didn't pay attention. Our attention span was short. Hmm. Was 9-11. A week after 9-11, the churches were jam-packed. People that never had worship learned and gave their life to Christ. But then, like so many, they were distracted by the world. They came out of the church house and they went back to what they were doing all along. And they never returned. Hmm. Now we got something that's even worse than 9-11. And it's a, it's, it's a virus that the scientists don't have the answers to. The doctors don't have an answer to. And the fellow on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, if you just listen to him, which I often tell people don't listen to him too much because a fool is known by the multitude of his words. He don't have an answer. He even came out this week and said that he hoped he can let us back out by Easter. And what you have to know is, it's not in his hands is left in the hand of the Almighty God. Amen. He's just doing guesswork. And now the death is not so much water, but it's a virus. Death has always existed from Eden Garden even up until this present moment. But for some, death is just a gateway or a transition to their true home. And so no matter what, if you know that your security is in Christ, you can know and rest assured and be at peace that the hour that you leave here is the hour that the Lord chose for you to leave here. And if you read your Bible right, death does not have dominion over a believer. Jesus said that we would die. But he said that we would not die and die forever. And so we have to know that. Noah is in this ark. Him and his wife, his three sons and their wife and their animals. Everything else on the planet dies. Everything dies. Now I want you to notice that he was not complaining because he was shut in by God. He didn't know how long the flood was going to be on earth. The Lord just told him that I'm going to make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. But he had to stay in the ark a lot longer than that. We complain about being shut in for a week or two or a month are two months and all we do not know is that the Lord is saving us from that which is out on the outside. It's not a matter of whether you got enough groceries. What it is is a distraction to what you are accustomed to doing. 
Noah was accustomed to doing a lot more before the Lord shut him in. But when the Lord shut him in, he still was productive because he had to take care of all the animals. He had to take care of them. He had to feed all of them. He was a zookeeper. And because he was a zookeeper, he had a lot to do. He was still productive. And while we are shut in, we too can be productive. You can read your holy scriptures. You can pray to the Almighty God and confess our sins. We can lift up our eyes and let him be our help. That we too can be productive. You can clean up your house, not only the house that you are in, but also the inside. Ask the Lord to wash your heart, wash your mind. So when he lets you back out, you no longer think like you was when he shut you in. So Noah obeys God, builds that ark. The Lord shuts him in. Starts raining. Now keep reading. 21. And all living things upon the earth perished, birds, domestic and wild animals, and reptiles and all mankind, everything that breathed and lived upon dry land. All existence on the earth was blotted out, <clears throat> man and animals alike, and reptiles and birds. God destroyed them all, leaving only Noah alive and those with him in the boat. And the water covered the earth 150 days. And the water covered the earth. So that tells you how long water was upon the earth for 150 days. But he's not through yet. He's not through. God is in charge. God is in charge even of this virus. The virus only gets here because God gave permission for it to be here. It is not so much an antidote that we should be seeking. We ought to be seeking the face of God because he is the eternal antidote for all of our personal problems, for all of our illnesses, for all of our challenges, for all of our crises. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help coming from the Lord, the creator of both heaven and earth. The universe belongs to the almighty God. Nothing happens in your life or my life. Suffering has a purpose. And when you understand that suffering has a purpose, no matter whether it's a virus, no matter whether it's joblessness, no matter whether it's no money, suffering has a purpose. And what you have to do is ask God, well, what are you teaching me? Teach me, Lord. Teach me. Noah learned some lessons about God while he was on that ark. On the inside, there were eight souls and some animals. On the outside, there were some animals and a planet full of people. Everything on the outside died. That's without a virus. It was just water. Everything died. Plants, animals, people died. And yet God is in charge. And it tells us that the water, 150 days, and we complaining about 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, but the Lord shut us in. And oftentimes you have to ask yourself, and you will ask yourself, what am I doing with this time that God has given us while we are shut in? Am I sleeping? Am I resting? Am I relaxing? 
Am I seeking his face, seeking his will? Will I, once he opens up the door and lets us go back out, will I attend worship mm. and praise him for sparing my life? Will I praise him and worship him, even on the inside? Noah was praising the Lord. And how can I say that? Because when he comes out, he will build an altar to God. That is a sign signifying that when he comes out of the ark, he worships God. Why? Because he knew that God had spared him and his family. Keep reading. Chapter 8. God didn't forget about Noah and all the animals in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the waters and the floods began to disappear. For the subterranean water sources ceased their gushing and the torrential rain subsided. So the flood gradually receded until 150 days after it began. The boat came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat. Three months later, as the waters continued to go down, other mountain peaks appeared. After another 40 days, Noah opened a porthole and released a raven that flew back and forth until the earth was dry. Meanwhile, he sent out a dove to see if it could find dry ground, but the dove found no place to light and returned to Noah, for the water was still too high. So Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back into the boat. Seven days later, Noah released the dove again, and this time, toward evening, the bird returned to him with an olive leaf in her beak. So Noah knew that the water was almost gone. A week later, he released the dove again, and this time she didn't come back. Twenty-nine days after that, Noah opened the door to look, and the water was gone. Eight more weeks went by. Then at last the earth was dry. Then God told Noah, you may all go out. Stop right there. Now, there's a couple of things you got to see, especially in chapter 7 and chapter 8. That the ark was a security for security for Noah and his family. On the inside was life. On the outside, there was death. When God shut him in, that was by his grace. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. It wasn't because Noah was perfect. You and I are not perfect. While he was in there, God gave him strength to feed and be a zookeeper while he was on that ark, to be productive, to worship him, to honor him, to show him reverence, because thus far nobody had really done so. Well, let me tell you this. Noah was shut in the ark, couldn't go outside for over 365 days. Mm. He didn't have no cable. He didn't have no computer. He didn't have a lot of people he could interact with other than his wife and his son's family. He didn't have none of that. And he did not complain. Why? Because God shut him in. Now when you read in chapter 8 that the Lord said, Okay, now Noah, the water has abated. You can go on out. Hmm. That was signifying to you and to me that there is an end to grace. Hmm. Jesus gave it to us in a parable. There's going to come a time when the bride and the bridegroom will meet up and be married by God the Father. The church is the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom. He tells us to be prepared. All week long, the president has came, let it come out of his mouth. We didn't see this coming. We didn't see this coming. Well, God gives us a sign. You don't know when I'm going to come, but be ready. Two things that you, well, really three things the church has to do. They have to worship the Lord and Him only. 
not money, not a building, not people, not the consolations from heaven, but the worship God. We have to always be watchful because as Jesus said, it's going to happen like a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. You don't know when a thief is going to come to your house to rob you. And neither do you know when Jesus is going to come here to get his church, his bride. And then while we are watching, we've got to wait. We've got to always be waiting and watching and worshiping. Waiting, watching, and worshiping. I think about this all the time. Look at all the hours that the Lord gives us throughout the week to do our thing, to work, to watch television, to go in and out. We're so busy and so distracted and so tired that we can't get up on Sunday morning and go and worship him. We set our own rules. There's a lot of bed and breakfast Baptists. A lot of bed and breakfast Pentecostals. There's a lot of God's people who want on Sunday morning to lay in bed and rest and relax. There's a difference between sleeping and resting. Everybody sleeps, but not everybody rests. Those who sleep are everybody, but those who rest, rest in the arms of the Lord. Now I want you to imagine in your mind's eye, for the 40 days and 40 nights, there was raining outside the ark, what Noah had to go through. The ark they was on had to be going up and down like a roller coaster. Up and down, up and down. Just to say that and just to know that. It, it was built in one spot. But by the time you, the Lord tells him, okay, you and your family can go out now. The Bible tells us that the ark rested on top of a mountain. Hmm. So when he opened up the doors... It's like stepping off an elevator that had not quite yet got to the floor that you pushed the button to. He had to walk down the mountain. Just imagine that. He had to walk down a mountain that was full of mud, full of mud, full of dead people who had tried to go up the mountain to be spared from the flood. But he had to walk down the mountain. His work was not yet quite done. And so the Lord has shut us in so that we might take time to reflect on our relationship with him. Your perspective about the death of Jesus Christ is so important. Jesus was not just any man that died out on the cross. Jesus is the middle man. While he's out there on Calvary's hill, dying for the sins of the world, my worst, my worst sins, my everyday sins, my past sins, my present sins, and even my future sins, Jesus, all of them were laid upon Jesus Christ. He reached up into heaven and grabbed his father's hand and brought his father's hand down so he could grasp mine. But I had to grasp his first because he's the middle man. Jesus wasn't on the left cross or the right cross. He was the middle man. That's why Paul would let us say by the Holy Spirit that there's one mediator, the man Christ Jesus the man Christ Jesus. There's only one mediator. The ark saved Noah. But really and truly, it was, G it was the Lord who saved him because he commanded him to build it. I can just imagine in my mind's eye, people were laughing at him while he was building over 100, 
Oh man. He, every every day he kept telling everybody, it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain, y'all, it's gonna rain. But every nail, every slime pit, every piece of wood he got together, it's gonna rain. They just laughed at him until the Lord shut him in. And the floods came. It was too late. The Lord shut him in. There's going to come a time in your life and in my life when death will come upon us. But if you are in the ark of safety, in the arms of Jesus Christ, you can leave here peacefully because you know that Christ has taken dominion even over death. And when you open your eye open, you behold his face and be in his kingdom. Yes, we're shut in right now. Don't complain. Don't bicker. Don't worry. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Look to Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's hill for you and me so that we might live and live more abundantly towards God. To be rich in Christ means not so much to have a big palatial house, to have a driveway full of cars, but to be rich in Christ is to know eternal things. Not only just to know them, but to like, love them and to seek the eternal face of the Almighty God. That's how you're rich in Christ. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ. The whole book of Ephesians tells you what you have in Christ. In Christ. I don't have to worry about leaving inheritance for my kids because my inheritance is in Christ. Christ will take care because what I have, he gave me. What I know, he taught me. Where I've been, he, took, he takes me. And so you got to look to the hills and put your trust in him. While we are shut in, will you look to Jesus or will you wait for the president? And he don't know what he's doing. He don't know what he's saying. He's just guessing. The scientists have told you they go by data. The Lord don't have no data. It's his eternal word. The world was made by, the universe was made by his word. He can stop this right now. Hmm. Just by saying stop. And we could all be let alone. And he can open up your front door and your back door. But Jesus is the door. And why you have an opportunity. Revelation 3 and 20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you just let me come in, I'll come in and I'll have fellowship with you. I'll eat with you. I'll talk with you. Now I want you to read John chapter 10, where Jesus says he is the door. You went verse 7 or the, before that? Before that. John chapter 10, verse 1. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. There is no other way. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. But when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, yet they will be by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they did not, do not know the voice of a stranger's. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. The only way you can get into heaven is to know that I am the door. Not Peter, not Paul, not your preacher, not your deacon. Jesus is the door. And every day it swings open wide. 
And every day he gives you an invitation. Come to me. Come to me. But you didn't know when you was going to be born. And you don't know when you're going to leave. Come while I'm calling you. You don't know when you're going to be called to go home. There's only two places to go. Either you're going to heaven to be with Jesus or you're going to hell to be with the devil and all his demonic friends down there. And I guess I should throw this in that in hell the devil is not in charge because he can't trust nobody. He's not in charge. Hell was built for the devil and all his followers. But it was enlarged for the followers. You can continue to follow him or place your faith in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 says, By faith Noah built the ark being warned of God. That destruction was coming. That death was coming. God warned Noah. said, Noah build because I'm on my, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. I know you ain't never seen rain before Noah. But it's going to rain. Trust me, it's going to rain Noah. And Noah trusted God. And built that ark. According to God's specifications. He didn't build a little boat. He built a big boat. Had some throwers to it. Had some stalls to it. He had a lot of work he had to do. And God shut him in. We too have worked. God has shut us in. And by his grace, we have been spared. Some he has called home. But we have been spared. I thought about that today. Cousin Larry had been called home. Brother Rudy has been left behind. Brother Johnny has been left behind. Brother Bobby been left behind. Brother Dickie been left behind. Sister Sandy, Sister Carolyn, left behind. All those sisters, Sister Debbie been left behind. All of those God left behind. What are you going to do though he left you behind? Will you draw closer? Or will you continue to go your own way? He's promised us he's never going to destroy all of humanity by water anymore. He didn't say it wasn't going to be floods. He said, I just want to destroy all of humanity by water anymore. I'm going to promise you I'm going to burn it up. Next time I'm going to burn it up. So don't let your possessions possess you. You possess your possessions. Because one of these days he's going to burn it up anyway. You just be close to him. And the Lord shut him in. Thank you, Lord, for shutting us in. And sparing us. And blessing us with grace. One of these days, grace is going in. And we're going to be on home with Jesus Christ. God bless you. And God keep you. Amen and amen.